Hello there, just a short video. But I just wanted to make a video about something that I guess bothers me. These videos are almost like keeping a journal for me, as it were. Feeling blue or shitty. You know, I can go back and see what I was doing in that moment. That actual place I was at it helps. It's like reading a journal and growing from it. Learning to grow and become better. And for me, that was realizing a lot of the crap I was taught in university and school was crap. Exactly that. I remember getting into sophomore year of physics and thinking there has to be an answer to this Big Bang debacle because they've not unified the field theories. They've never found a true proper missing link to prove evolution and yet here's all these people teaching this. It wasn't until recently I learned that it's just a, you know, a sinking ship. If you watch Ben Stein's Expelled No Intelligence Allowed, you come to realize there's lots of professors and very impressive tenured guys who uh, totally know for sure that evolution and the Big Bang is bunk, but if they say anything, they'll lose their tenure. One of the biggest things I realized is the spinning ball lie. Earth can't be a spinning ball. It has to be geocentric. I wouldn't even consider myself a flat earther. I consider myself a biblical geocentrist because in my mind, I've seen too much evidence and the first one is, people always spit gravity, gravity, it's gravity, oh, it's gravity. Hey, did you know about gravity? Gravity, gravity, the Gnostic God, gravity, 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 gravity. Well, guess what? Gravity depends on one thing. It's solely created by one thing, the rotation of Earth. So if you can prove Earth ain't spinning, then gravity is literally out the friggin' window. And people can't wrap their minds around it. It's almost like... A blanket concept or a Stockholm syndrome to having our education system hijacked by a bunch of Freemason goofs. And so gravity, when you read that Oleg D. Polachenko or whatever, he wrote a couple books called Gravity and Co-Gravitation where he basically proves that electromagnetism is the superior force, not gravity. And that stuff like black holes are actually just electromagnetic wave distortion. Plasma clouds slamming into each other. Also look into Dr. Wallace Thornhill. You take the electric universe model, you put it in a geocentric framework, it works perfectly. But as far as the spinning ball thing, like proofs the Earth ain't spinning, as I yammer away here, well, molten metals lose magnetic properties. Lose magnetic properties. Therefore, the Earth's core cannot be creating any form of electromagnetic field. And these Pythagorean math cults that or that created the notion of heliocentrism were all a bunch of sun-worshipping... Freemason, Sodomite, Jesuit scumbags. Like, you know, people ask me, where did this all come from? You know, they've had globes forever. This is a really old theory. It's like, nah, up until the 1600s, it was a cult. And then along came this, I don't know what you want to call him, Sir Isaac Newton and his anecdotal wet dream, as that uh, J.P. Sears always says. But, uh, no. Gravity doesn't exist if you can prove there's no spinning ball because gravity is created by the spinning ball. So if there is no spinning ball, like proofs for geocentrism, another big doozy, space is a super cold plasma fluid. It would make space travel more akin to submarine travel. So if that's the case, because an atmosphere cannot exist adjacent to a vacuum, it just cannot. There has to be something separating the two. Also, sun dogs and rainbows, proof due to the laws of refraction, that Earth is in some kind of enclosed refractive dome. If you read Principia of Gravity, Sir Isaac Newton's initial book, it's all him asking questions. If, if gravity is real, and if this, and if that, and, and he wrote this book and theorized gravity because it was all about sun worship, heliocentrism. Gravity, people just say it like it's a buzzword and they don't even know what they're talking about. It bothers me. Electromagnetism is the superior force. Electromagnetism is the field around all matter that holds it together. If the electromagnetic field collapses, all matter collapses to atoms, less than atoms. Just poof. The Bible says when the sun darkens and the moon ceases to give her light, well, what will happen? All matter will collapse. You know, the waters above the waters will cave in. New Jerusalem will come down. I've also heard tell that some people are claiming Russia is the actual Jerusalem. But that's a whole other topic. Gravity is not real. There's lots of things to prove geocentrism. Even the movie The Principle, 
they still think they're on a ball, even though you can see things hundreds of miles away at sea level, proving curvature doesn't exist. But, you know, people still think it's a ball. And yet, people can't wrap their mind around gravity. It doesn't exist. Case closed. The heliocentric versus geocentric model is so laughable that this argument even exists. Okay, the Big Bang wasn't even invented till the 30s. Before that, this was a, a common debate. A lot of people didn't believe in the heliocentric model before NASA. Truth be told, up until the 1600s, it was just another sun cult. Because every scientist pushing the heliocentric model was either a Jesuit or a Freemason. Sun worshipping pedo goofs. Now, for heliocentrism to be real, this little cartoon we're looking at, according to NASA and Monkey Man Science, we're all monkeys on this spinning ball, circling the sun at a thousand miles an hour, which is then circling around the solar system at 67,000 miles an hour, and then the Milky Way is supposedly spinning around at 515,000 miles an hour, and all of it is spinning out of the Big Bang event horizon lie at half the speed of light, and we don't feel anything because of their Gnostic G, lowercase g, God, gravity, gravity which can't be proven, Gravity, which is an anecdotal wet dream of a sun-worshipping Jesuit Freemason named Isaac Newton. I'm sorry, if you believe we're spinning at all those ridiculous speeds, you've been brainwashed. I don't know what else to tell you. There's no sh way to sugarcoat this. But in the description section below are hours and hours and hours and hours and hours worth of citations proving geocentrism. There is no way we are spinning at all these ridiculous speeds. It just can't be. You gotta use your common sense. Come on, use your common sense. Why is NASA part of the Department of Defense? They divided up the seas into 33rd degrees. Feeding kids Freemasonry. Better be careful what you read. Who really writes for B.O.B.? 
But whatever, before I get sidetracked into the cloning center topic, back to Flat Earth, the idea of this, even on the United Nations map, you'll notice that it's divided up into 33 sections, 33 separate little jails. It's, it's all a lie. We are not moving. Earth is not moving. NASA gets $50 million a day, and you wonder why they lie? They get up there in their rockets, they fake a few pictures of the Earth, and suddenly the heliocentric versus geocentric debate is crushed? Bollocks. Look at this cartoon. Look at it. This is what Monkey Man Science claims is happening to us right now. Oh, and by the way, the stars never change. Ever. The North Star never moves. And yet... They want us to believe that we're spinning at all these ridiculous, stupid speeds. Well, I'm sorry, people. I'm not a monkey on a spinning ball. I'm a human created by God in this geocentric enclosed earth. And there's proof. And if you can't look, I guess that just makes you a coward. So, you know, I don't have time for that crap. The only thing I have time for is discovery and realism. So, I mean, whatever. Take a look at this picture because this ain't real. This is a NASA cartoon, like every other NASA cartoon. And you will see the same things that I saw. Let's watch. We have to introduce the concept of free fall. So let's use this model of the Earth. And let's enlist the help of a friend, Taxi. You might know her. So what is significant about this video is, number one, it was live to school children. Number two, we have this stuffed animal that is transitioning in on another video channel. And the actor is able to reach up and grab this doll in real 3D space and manipulate this doll with their hands. And so the only way you're going to pull that off is with one technology. And that technology is virtual reality. Next segment, I'm going to show you how NASA grabs objects in 3D space, rotates them around, manipulates them. They can do this with water, with cloth, anything. And the cool thing about it is we can take what they're doing, what they're seeing with their contact virtual reality augmented lenses and put that on a separate video layer live. So in this clip, they're talking live feed and what you know we have a astronaut go by us in the background uh, obviously trying to give it a more realistic spacey station busy effect the only problem is the camera that was supposed to mask this harness out or the uh, video feed is not working and so we see the guy come flying along in a harness on his wires Pretty amazing. But that's not all that goes wrong here. Okay, so you see to the right this guy's flipping this hat. This hat's actually on another video um, channel in 3D space. It's virtual reality. He's They're wearing augmented uh, contact lenses so that they can interact with these 3D objects. Now in this scene, the guy on the left in the green shirt, he thinks he sees an object in 3D space that's being broadcast to him. So he grabs it and he puts it off to the side. He's looking straight ahead because he's looking at an object rotating in front of him. But the video channel is down that is supposed to show the viewers what we're supposed to see. And so we don't actually get to see the object that he has seen. And I would just sum this up as a very terrible, bad, horrible day for NASA doing live feeds. Hey, yo, girl, show them that song I taught you. I got Jesus, what you got? I got Jesus, what you got? I got Jesus, what you got? I know you saved, or you not. Jesus came down to this earth to die for our sins. Sent his only begotten son to save us. The least we can do is pray for
Take me in, set me free Without you, I'm not me We're not worthy of your grace But you show it, Lord, so thanks Satan mad cause we believe it He don't like it when we scream it I got Jesus, what you got? I got Jesus, what you got? I got Jesus, what you got? I hear you say, though you not I got Jesus, what you got? I got Jesus, what you got? I got Jesus, what you got? I hear you say, though you not I got Jesus, what you got? I got Jesus, what you got? I got Jesus, what you got? I hear you say, though you not I got Jesus, what you got? I got Jesus, what you got? I got Jesus, what you got? I hear you say, though you not Just basically a short video about, you know, NASA's lies and cartoon balls and all that nonsense. But I just saw a meme on the Facebook and I thought it was pretty cool. Good meme. So I thought I'd make a quick video about it. And basically, it's the topic of water always being flat and level in large bodies. Water is always flat and level. If you look at these experiments, which you could replicate yourself with any number of different kinds of containers, water will always find its flat level, no matter what. And this is observable, repeatable, and measurable. So that's game, point, and match. Game, point, and match. Like, pseudoscience, the idea that water curves to a ball, a ball spinning through space at ridiculous speeds, okay, that's not observable. That's not repeatable in a lab, and that's not measurable. NASA cartoons are not proof. And if you can't accept that NASA makes cartoons, very good cartoons, and that those spacewalks and whatnot are fake, well, then, like this meme right here says, in addition to the whole topic of water always being flat and level, you got cartoons like this. If you can't tell the difference, maybe you don't want to see the difference. As far as this goes, that's kind of a cool swimming pool, wouldn't you agree? Look at how it sort of just flows at the edge there. But anyway, yeah, water is always flat and level. It's just, it's a no-brainer, really. When people will try to make excuses or they'll watch a cartoon on TV with Stephen Hawking's or Neil Disgrace Tyson on a green screen movie set where they just explain some mumble jumble that makes no sense. No, water is always flat and level. Unless you got a fisheye camera, right? So then you got this here. It's called the Pythagorean Theorem of Spherical Trigonometry. And so this chart will tell you how many miles is how much earth curve, how much dip. And when you start to get up to the record of 273 miles, you realize that missing curvature cannot be explained. I'll let you pause this and take a peek at your own pace. 
But back to my actual post, yeah, this is the record. According to the curvature model that Monkey Man Science uses in every university, these little islands and whatnot in the distance there should be behind seven miles of Earth curve. But they're not. There they are. So, like, what? Do the eyes that God gave you deceive you? Or are you just going to believe some lie on the television? Like, it's so easy to see this. And once you do... <laughs> or the Chicago skyline across the Great Lake Michigan. I mean, 60 miles? That's 2,166 feet. Where's the curvature? And I happen to know Rob Skiba and Rick Hummer. I've talked to him on the phone. Rob's, and Rob sent me a box full of books, including this one right here, which I've halfway read already. It's awesome sauce. You should check it out. They took a boat across this, filming the whole way, proving that it's not some retarded mirage. This is not something people can just say. You know, I don't care how many NASA cartoons they give you. They're lying. They have to be lying. This proves they're lying. But people don't want to look at it. It's too scary. $50 million a day on the line. Why would they lie? And that's just NASA. Imagine the education system and all that and the budget for the Newtonian Physics Society and everything. Forget about it. Give your head a shake. But come on. Think, people. Water is always flat and level. So how could it possibly curve to a magic ball? But the answer is it can't.
again about this Antarctica thing. <laughs> it just makes me giggle. I mean, have you ever heard the term damage control? Okay, man crosses Antarctica. Really, the whole thing? Because there's a guy named Captain Cook who was the first one to sail completely all 32,000 miles in diameter. Now, this guy here, this army captain from Britain, whatever, Colin O'Brady. I guess the kicker is, is he a willing participant, a knowing liar, or is he just someone who thinks he was doing a cool thing to raise awareness or blah, blah, blah. Maybe he was just a guy they approached. The Flat Earth Movement's growing, their power base is shrinking, the internet is getting the word out there, and they needed someone to pull off a stunt. This guy was there, he was willing, he was able. Maybe he knows, maybe he doesn't know. But the truth is, he's just crossing some little shelf. And this is all damage control against the Flat Earth Movement. People think the Flat Earth Movement is silly or whatever, that it couldn't be pulled off, but the truth of the matter is, is it's about money, you know? When NASA finally got up there and realized that uh, they were wrong, they weren't going to let all that money and power they had on the line just evaporate. All the schools, Newtonian physics, the Royal Society of London, they had everything stitched up by then. And now, because finding this out, and then what? The, the mass population would realize there's a creator, and then it's game over for the New World Order education system, which has been preaching what? Evolution? What? For 50 years? And why? Because they want you feeling godless inside, so you'll do godless things. But it's all, you know, a multi-layered sandwich. A really, really ugly, rotten sandwich. I don't want to eat it. It's going to be gross. But, um, like I said, this guy here, like, this is the actual thing he crossed. Just a little tiny shelf. That little tiny bit there, that's it. That's all he crossed. But yet there's this whole other ice rim. So before you scoff Flat Earth, before you even get into the idea of just immediately thinking it's stupid, stop, take a breath, and realize that it's possible NASA could be lying. Start with Operation Paperclip. Start with Stanley Kubrick admitting to filming the fake moon landing. Start with the fact that Nazis started NASA. Start with the fact that really it's about embezzling all that money. Things like this, these are publicity stunts. This is a publicity stunt.
I can't get it through people's heads fast enough. What Fisher Islands cameras do to film? <laughs> now, Globers be like, uh, the hallway is curved. And yeah, no. Now submit everything they've put out as a composite or a Photoshop picture. Coming straight out of Photoshop. But anyway, long story short, other than trying to rewrite that rap song, which would be funny, this post, I liked it. I thought it was funny because fisheye lens will cause distortion. It, NASA never turns the camera 180, 360. They never show a video of this real time. They lie with their, uh, whatchamacallit, ice uh, iss space station when the time delay on the film and or getting maybe an hour a day at a certain time is what they actually give us they claim it's live feed when it's not i've made a video here the problem people's problem with flat earth you know i wrote a little poem about it uh, filling our our minds with evolutionary pride to make us feel godless but when our hearts are hungry we will be willing to eat all sorts of lies it's hard to read like that but and so i just wanted to remind people that yes this is how they do it <laughs> they use this stupid fisheye lens if you look at any uppity up picture of earth if you check out any picture you see it look at this one even a sunspot forget about it and then there's pictures of the sun in the clouds showing proof that the sun's not 93 million miles away. Clearly NASA's full of crap and something's up. They're Freemasons and they're, they're always doing the hand signs. Some of them are even still alive. I mean, creepy. So I'll put a couple links in the description below. And I just want to remind everybody that fisheye lens is not real. It, this is real. A lot of people were quoting a myth started by, I don't know, Neil Disgrace Tyson or Bill Nye, the liar guy. The idea that the flat earth wasn't something that cultures all unanimously agreed upon back in the day. The Until the 1600s when the globe was invented, almost everybody believed the flat earth. I mean, for those people who think that uh, it wasn't in every culture, <laughs> that's why you're looking at this picture. The truth of the matter is, is every culture believed the earth was fixed and motionless, a flat plane and a firmament set on pillars or a tree of life or on a floating turtle. I mean, it's only the modern NASA guys who don't fit in. I mean, the ball earth lie is part of a sun cult, heliocentric sun cult. It has nothing to do with truth or reality. The reality is every culture on Earth had a flat Earth model, including uh, Aboriginal peoples like the Mayans and the Australian Aboriginals. The modern globe Earth was only solidified since NASA was founded. Before that, this was still an honest debate. Before that, you could talk about this. Before that, it was a fair fight, let's just call it. 
But now, since NASA's cartoons, it seems like everyone's been conned into believing the argument is settled. But that all comes down to people not wanting to believe that NASA could fake it. Well, NASA can fake it. I mean, look at you can see the cartoon ball here on 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 this picture. I mean, one of these things is not like the other. One of these things is a big load of poop. So I mean, the Hebrews even they're on there. Um, India, the Vikings, Babylonians, the Navajo Indians, you name it, they believed in a flat earth until NASA came along. And aren't we so glad that the Freemasonic NASA liars told us what the real was, eh? Like, give your head a shake. Why would anyone just believe NASA? I guess because it's been hammered into our heads since the cradle. But, like I said, short vid aside, take a look at all these pictures and do your own research. I'll link some Flat Earth videos and proof videos in the bottom. And I'll just say peace out.